Hey guys, Razorblade Mango here. And today I want to talk about Injustice 2. I was eventually going to make a video on this anyway, and I made a, a somewhat video on it a few weeks back regarding, you know, like the announcement of like Watch Dogs 2 and Justice 2 and the new Kingdom Hearts 2.8 trailer. But today, this whole video is going to be dedicated just to talking about Injustice 2 and talking about why the alarm bells are, are ringing off the hook in my head regarding this game and regarding new information, new stuff that uh, Ed Boon has shared with the public. So I'm going to be reading from IGN. I'll have, of course, I'll have the article linked in the description box. So here we go. Um, so it starts off with, Injustice 2 will feature plenty of additional characters following the game's launch. Which is, you know, to be expected, to be honest. I mean, it happened with MK9, happened with Injustice, Mortal Kombat X, and it makes sense that they're going to have DLC characters for Injustice 2. That's not my problem. Here is my problem with what's... And I'm, I'm keep reading. Uh, NetherRealm creative director Ed Boon has confirmed the studio is taking a, and I quote, more aggressive approach when it comes to DLC. One of the things we've been doing, trying to do more and more with every game, is to support it for a longer period of time, Boone told IGN. With DLC characters, we've had four with Mortal Kombat, six with Injustice, eight with Mortal Kombat X, and with Injustice 2, we plan on continuing that pattern. He, noted, he added, noting, it will certainly be more aggressive than we've been in the past. So... The assumption with this, the logical assumption with this, is that Injustice 2 might have up to 10 DLC characters. So, and here's my problem with this. Um, first of all, that's overkill. Okay, I, I was fine with Mortal Kombat, the MK9, having 4 DLC characters. I was fine with Injustice having 6. I was very iffy about Mortal Kombat X having eight DLC characters. And even then, they've gone on to say that we might not be done with MKX DLC, even though they've already released the Game of the Year edition for it. So, now we're going to have ten DLC characters. With possible, possibly even more than one season pass for the game, which is most likely the way it's going to be. We might, that might not even be the limit, we might get more DLC characters. So, my problem with this is that, one, like I said, it's overkill. Ten, ten DLC characters for a game like this is overkill. Number two, it seems like the only way Ed Boon seems to associate, you know, long support of a game with DLC characters. Like, paid DLC characters. And he doesn't mention anything along the lines of, you know, free maps, free free characters, free move sets, free modes, stuff like that. I mean, even like Mortal Kombat X, you had the, the free fatality packs and then you had the dumb... The stuff that really pissed me off is that even though if you bought the season pass, you still gotta buy extra skins on top of that, which I think is a load of shit. But that this is not about Mortal Kombat, this is about Injustice 2. So, uh, I guess the only way Ed Boon seems to think, or Ed Boon and Warner Brothers seem to think, you know, supporting a community post-launch is paid stuff. Which, I mean, if you looked at something like Rocket League, which just recently released a new really kick-ass uh, arena for, for free, if you look at what Doom is doing, and Doom has a season pass as well, yes, but you get new modes... You get new functionality with Snap Map and all that's free. That's fine. But Mortal Kombat X, I mean, not Mortal Kombat, Injustice 2 seems to be just focused on paid DLC as supporting the community longer. And third, this whole sense of being more aggressive with an approach to DLC, that's, that's very, very concerning uh because you know i i, I want to put this out there i don't dislike ed boon 
I'm sure Ed Boon is a very nice person in real life. He's had a tremendous impact on the fighting genre. His, his status as a legendary developer is not without question. He is, you know, he like, seems like a cool guy. He runs his Twitter community very well. I like him as a person. I seem to like him as a person. And I don't think this is his fault. I think with a lot of past stuff and a lot of the way the current AAA market works is that you have you sign a deal with the devil when you went to Warner Brothers. Because Warner Brothers right now is scum. They are scum. They've consistently for the past two or so years have in my mind surpassed EA and Ubisoft as like one of the worst developers out there I mean uh, publishers out there as far as being shit goes like be making really bad decisions being really shady with customers dicking people over so any game that has the Warner Brothers seal attached to it I have a lot of reservations about and hearing this come from Ed Boon's mouth and the fact that they've probably whooped him into submission to say these things and to give the game, you know, aggressive DLC practices and the the new gear system, which I'll get to in a bit. But it just it's just sad that Warner Brothers is taking NetherRealm, a studio that before Mortal Kombat X I had a lot of faith in, I, because I thought they, they handled Mortal Kombat 9 really well, Injustice I think is a fantastic fighting game, and now it's come to this, especially after Mortal Kombat X, which felt like such a huge betrayal and a big disappointment. And with Injustice 2, the sad part is, is I really, really like the franchise, and I thought what was shown for the game as far as gameplay goes. I thought it looked really cool and it looked like a lot of fun. But hearing this, this kind of aggressive DLC practices and this gear system and Warner Brothers history now of being a shit, which by the way, don't even bother buying this on PC unless you want unless you want a, a really bad time. But this is just, all of this is just stacking up to being, for me, a complete turnoff for Injustice 2. I'll probably rent it or borrow it from somebody. And and I know people that are already like, well, I'll just wait for the, the Ultimate Edition. I'm not even sure if I want to bother with the Ultimate Edition in this situation. Because, will that be the end? I mean, that, that doesn't seem to be the case with Mortal Kombat X. Even if you bought Mortal Kombat XL... It seems they want to do more DLC outside of that. So, and even with the, the Ultimate Edition of Injustice 2, you still got to deal with the gear system, which here's what he had to say about the gear system. We have ideas in our head of the things we'd like to consider, but certainly haven't like nailed down this is going to be the way to do it. Ideally, to me... The whole purpose of this feature is customization, longevity, and ongoing modeling of your character, so to speak. So, this is in response to a possible pay-to-win, a pay to, it is pay-to-win, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, pay-to-win unlock model for those who don't have time to earn all the rewards by just playing the game. <sighs> Some players won't want to invest months and months of their time into getting the rewards, and Boone said they're looking for a way to cast the biggest net possible to get as many players into it as possible. So this is basically confirming microtransactions. You know they're going to do it. I don't care if if this is just a quote-unquote possibility for now. They're going to do it. They're going to do microtransactions because it's Warner Brothers and because it's a fighting game and because they there's no way they didn't make this gear system just to shove in microtransactions. There's no way. You'd have to be a fool to believe that that they're doing it and they, they're trying to spin this into like, oh, well, we're going to put microtransactions into the game for convenience to help the player. So here's the bullshit part of that. You didn't need to put in a gear system. You don't need, and even if you really wanted to 
even if you had this idea for a gear system before Warner Brothers got involved and said, oh, what do you have there? Microtransactions. You know, this game was going to sell. This game is going to sell like fucking hotcakes. Lots of copies. Because, one, it's NetherRealm. People love NetherRealm. It has a very big following. Two, it's Injustice. People love Injustice. Three, it's DC. People love DC. People are going to buy a game with DC in it. So, I don't understand... Actually, no. I take that back. I do understand it. I understand exactly what Warner Brothers is doing with this microtransaction shit. They just want to do the exact same thing that they did for Mortal Kombat X, where, and I, I've told this story b b before, but I had somebody, a friend of mine, who I will not name, who worked for a company that I will not name, who owned uh, Mortal Kombat X days before it came out, even like a week before it came out. And he told me he was able to earn the coins a lot quicker, a lot more frequently. But once the game came out, they added in a patch that slowed the progression down to a crawl because they wanted to tempt people to pay for that $20 unlock everything microtransaction and to, to pay for easy fatalities, which again is just a disgusting, demeaning thing to do with the Mortal Kombat X. Um, so... I can see that, so uh, someone that's willing to do that, and I know their excuse is, oh, well, we wanted to have the option for journalists who are playing the game before everybody else to unlock everything before everybody else. What? So, so your paying customers don't want that? Your paying customers don't want to earn the stuff really quickly so they could play with it and have fun with it? I thought that was the idea of Mortal Kombat to unlock all the to, to unlock everything within a reasonable, timely manner, just to play everything and look cool and be cool. But no, I guess not. I guess it's now just to give me money right now. You spent sixty dollars. You spent ninety dollars. Spent one hundred and forty dollars. No, we want more money. Fuck you. And that's the vibe I get from Injustice Two, because and I've I've seen the gameplay from Injustice Two. Like I said. It looked like a lot of fun, but what I saw from this gear system seems to confirm my my biggest fear is that this the the gear system it's not just cosmetic. It has power ups. It will make your health stronger. It will make your your attacks quicker, your defense higher. So, if they do add a microtransaction, which they're going to do, okay, when they add the microtransactions in, it might not be at launch most likely will be, but it will be pay to win. They will turn Injustice 2, a competitive fighting game, into a pay to win model. Where people that don't want to spend, which they're probably, again, going to hobble the gear system to where the loot drop, they're going to do the Overwatch thing where the loot drops are going to just drop crap after crap after crap after crap until you finally get the thing you want. It's going to be another gambling simulator. So... With this, it's it's pay to win. This isn't like Overwatch, which Overwatch's microtransactions I don't like. Um, but I will give them that they are just cosmetic. They do not affect the gameplay at all. This affects the gameplay. Injustice 2 affects how much stronger the gear system it affects how much stronger, how much faster, how much more damage you can take. So, say somebody has like a hundred dollars to blow. And they will spend all that money on the game, even though they might have bought the collector's edition, which will probably be like $140, $150. So, just to be stronger, they will have bought their their way into being a more powerful fighter. Because they spent all that money on the extra stuff, on the gear loot drops, all the other bullshit. So, somebody that doesn't want to pay and just wants to play the game normally to unlock everything... They're going to be shit out of luck because people are going to have already bought the loot drops over and over and over again with the microtransactions will have gotten stronger and it will have made, it will have broken the whole game. You'll have people running around with the highest loot because they bought it. They didn't earn it, they bought it. So, and that makes me sad because I, I really wanted an Injustice 2 before Mortal Kombat X. When Mortal Kombat X happened, 
I went, oh shit, this, this is what they're doing in Mortal Kombat X? I'm very concerned of what they're going to do with Injustice 2. And sure enough, my worst fears are being realized with this talk of aggressive DLC and the microtransaction thing and the, the gear system and all this bullshit. This doesn't look good. And it, uh, my interest in this game is is just quickly dying. And I still, I still want to play it just to try it out for the gameplay. But... The thought of me owning it is becoming a, a very, very unlikely possibility. Especially when other stuff's going to be coming in 2017 that won't slow the progression for you to milk you for more money or to include aggressive DLC because, for, because $60 isn't enough. So, it just makes me sad. And it's just... It's another franchise, and I, I said this. I told you guys it was only going to get worse when I talked about microtransactions in my top 10 things I hated about 2015. I said it's going to get worse for the microtransactions. In 2016, it is much worse. It's getting worse, and it will probably get even, even more bad in 2017. So, it's just a shame. And it makes me sad, because I actually wanted to play Injustice 2. But I, I kind of don't at this point. So, yeah, it hurts. It, it it hurts to see to see something that could easily be avoided, easily be scrapped for a more consumer friendly business model. Is just is it just has to be there now? I guess that's the thing. Which. I, I'm not going to accept that. And I'm already seeing people being complacent with microtransactions and being complacent with gear drops and aggressive DLC because people's will is just being grounded into dust because companies are being much more aggressive about it now than ever. But I will not give in. I will never ever say that, that this is commonplace. Whenever I hear that a game is going to have microtransactions in it, my heart just sinks because I go, I go. This does not belong in these games. Like when Uncharted Char Four was revealed to have microtransactions, I was I was a little I was rather disappointed in Naughty Dog um, when it was revealed that Garden Warfare Two snuck in microtransactions again. I was disappointed in PopCap and EA, um, and now hearing this, I, I, it just it's it's disappointing and it's it makes me sad. Because I want, I want to support Nether Realm. I want to support Ed Boon. I want to support Mortal Kombat. I want to support Injustice, but I can't. I I cannot, for the good of my, I guess moral code or ethics code, cannot support this. I, this this is taking it too far. It's twisting it into something. It's taking something that I enjoy, and once again twisting it into something ugly and just sucking out all the life out of it, turning it into an empty husk, and then it will throw it on the pile of empty husk and move on to something else. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Injustice 2 business stuff, which should not be accepted. Don't ever accept it. Don't accept anything less than something consumer-friendly. So, thank you guys for watching. Have a good one, guys. Take care.